there weavers welcome back this is grace with tangled webs weaving and i'm starting a new project that is a pattern that has some black stripes in it the project uses 8-2 cotton and i have all the colors that i need except for black i don't weave a lot with black cotton and this pattern calls for very little of that color so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to demonstrate how you can dye at home to get the exact color that you're looking for. So this is obviously a cellulose fiber and cellulose is dyed a little bit different than uh, protein fibers. So cellulose fibers are anything that is plant-based such as cotton, um, bamboo, uh, Pretty much anything that is plant-based. Uh, protein fibers are anything that is animal-based, such as wool, um, alpaca, uh, even silk, because silk is spun by a caterpillar, and that is an animal. Well, it's an insect, but it is a protein-based fiber. So uh, we're going to demonstrate today the uh, dyeing methods for dyeing cellulose or cotton fiber. Um, so a little bit about safety first though. So I've dyed a fair amount of uh, fibers and yarn um, in my home and it is a safe process if you follow some basic uh, guidelines. So first of all, um, handle all chemicals uh, in a safe manner. Um, store them away from children, all that good stuff. Uh, protect yourself by using um, a N95 mask when using or when handling powdered chemicals uh, so that you don't breathe them in. And also, um, it's a good idea to wear uh, safety glasses. Uh, if you wear glasses normally, that is probably sufficient. Um, but if you don't, if you wear contacts or don't need glasses, then probably safety goggles or safety glasses is a good idea in case something splashes. Um, work in a ventilated area uh, because there can be some fumes. Don't eat and drink while you're dying because you might pick up the wrong container and drink from it. Um, and never use the same container uh, that you're dying in to prepare food in. Always have all of your equipment separate and dedicated to dyeing. Um, let's see, oh, and not absolutely necessary, but just keep in mind that dyes do stain by the very nature of what they are. And um, it's a good idea to wear either clothes that you don't want, don't care if they get stained or splashed on or um, wear something over your clothing so that they don't get damaged. And you can uh, use bare hands when you're dying, but keep in mind that they will get stained by the dyes. And if you do a lot of it, it's uh, it could um, dry out your hands and uh, cause irritation. So you can either use uh, reusable rubber gloves or um, the disposable kind. So let's get started. Um, so cellulose fibers are dyed using a uh, dye called fiber reactive dye and I get mine from Dharma Trading Company. Um, they have a wide range of colors and this particular color that we're using today is called 300 New Black. Because it is a dark color, um, you need to use a lot more of the dye itself and you need to use a lot more of the additives, uh, the mordants to make the dye adhere to your fiber. Okay, um, so there are a few things that we need to dye our fiber. Uh, first, we need the fiber or the yarn. Um, in this case, I'm using yarn and uh, I have measured it out. Um, I've skeined it into a skein that is uh, two yards long, and I did two skeins that are 400 yards each. 
that was what I had left over on the cone from another project. So um, I figured I'd dye up all of it. I don't need that much for my project, but since I'm dyeing, I might as well dye all of it. Um, you need the dye itself, as I said, uh, the Dharma um, Trading Company, the fiber reactive dye. Um, I am using 300 new black. So for the dark color, you use about a 10% of the weight of your dry goods. So I weighed out my yarn dry and it's 108 grams. So I'm going to need um, 10% of uh, the dye um, stock and that is going to be 10.8 uh, grams. Um, let's see. So the next thing you need is uh, salt. So you want to use non-iodized salt, and that's very important. And the salt allows the dyes to penetrate the fibers and create a chemical bond uh, with the um, dye to the fiber. So again, with the salt uh, you use, you would normally use a ratio of um, like one or a hundred percent of your dry weight of goods. Uh, so that would be um, 108 grams of salt, but because we're doing a dark color, we're going to use 150% of my weight of dry goods or 100. 62 grams. Uh, let's see, soda ash. So soda ash is an alkali and you want to uh, be careful when using this, uh, wear your dust mask or respirator because it is uh, powdery and it can irritate your lungs. Um, so you can use the soda ash in two different ways. You can add it um, during the dyeing process, or you can pre-soak your yarn in the soda ash um, prior to dyeing, which this is what I did because I'm doing a dark color. It just makes uh, everything adhere um, better. The, the soda ash, again, like the salt, create, helps create a chemical bond and penetrate the yarn. And, uh, the soda ash helps create a chemical bond at lower temperatures. And because we are dying in lukewarm water, uh, we want that, uh, we want the fibers to be able to accept the dye. And um, you want the pH of the dye bath to be about 10.5 which is very hot. And then the last thing that we need is water. And we use a ratio of about 20 to one on the water. So for 106 grams of fiber, I'm going to be using 2.1 liters of water or a little over, <clears throat> or a little over a half a gallon. So I've got everything set up. Um, so here we have uh, my pan that I will be dying in and uh, all of my measuring equipment. And I've got my quantities written down here and my instructions so I don't forget what I'm doing. Um, I have a scale here to weigh larger uh, quantities of um, product. And then I have a small digital scale here that can go in point grams. Um, and then I have a variety of uh, little cups and measuring spoons to, that are dedicated just to dyeing. And um, I have several spoons because you don't want to mix uh, spoons if you're doing several different dye colors. Uh, you don't want to dip a black spoon into a yellow dye cup. All right, 
So I have my yarn pre-soaked here and you want your yarn, whether you're pre-soaking it in the soda ash solution or um, if you're adding the soda ash during the dyeing process, um, you want to soak your yarn or your fiber for at least 30 minutes uh, so that it is thoroughly wetted um, all the way through. I ended up soaking this for three days because I kept getting pulled away to other things. But that was that's fine. It doesn't matter. So I have my water uh, measured out here and we're just going to put that most of it into my dye bath. I'm going to hold back a cup or so. That's good. So now I'm going to measure out my dye and I'm going to paste it up. So I'll put the dye in a small container and then put a small amount of hot water in it to dissolve it, make up a slurry. Then I'll pour some more water in, make sure that it's good and mixed. Um, because, especially with black, black is made up of several different colors, obviously, to make black. And if you don't get it thoroughly dissolved, um, some of the molecules in there can split and you'll get uh, streaks of say red or a blue in there in your yarn and different colors strike onto the yarn at different rates so if the dye isn't dissolved very well especially with a dark color like this um, you may end up getting um, another color striking first and then you don't have a true black. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put on my dust mask and so I probably won't talk while I'm doing this because you can't all be muffled sounding. So um, because I'm weighing a very small amount I will use my small gram container and I'll put my uh, measuring cup on there and then uh, tear it out so that I get the exact amount. All right. And with black, it's a good idea to shake it up real good before you open it, um, just to get everything distributed, all those different colors in there that make up your black. And carefully open it. Uh, you'll also notice that I've put down some paper to protect my countertop. Um, since I'm doing this in my kitchen, I don't want my countertops um, stained. All right, so we're gonna do 10.8 grams, which is a lot of dye. So the last little bit, just kind of want to tap a little, and you might think, well, 10.8 versus 10.78, does that really make a big difference? It can. With black, it's probably not that critical, but all right. So we have our, and it just changed on me, so we'll take a little bit out just to be certain. So now I'm going to uh, put this in my jar and I'm gonna put a little bit of hot water 
in there. And I put the water in this measuring cup that I did because there's a little bit of uh, dye still in there. So we'll put that in. And I'm probably putting in, oh, I don't know, uh, a couple tablespoons of water. And then take your spoon and mix that up really well. And this process can take a while to dissolve everything. And once you uh, get the powder into uh, completely liquid, you can remove your dust mask. So if you want to get into uh, home dyeing, um, I would recommend going to um, the, a discount store or a place like uh, Goodwill or something like that to get your pans. And that's where I got, well, I had this pan, um, but uh, big spoons, uh, measuring cups, things like that. You can get them really cheap at uh, at uh, Goodwill or Value Village or the dollar store. I've gotten a lot of measuring cups at the dollar store. All right, so that is pretty good for that small amount. Now I'm going to take my reserved water and I'm going to uh, fill this little cup up. and stir some more. And it's sticking, you can see it's sticking to my spoon. And you can see it's, there's some powder still on there. So we're just going to make sure that this is really dissolved well. And here you can see, this is why we cover everything because it will splash. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is um, because this is a dark color, I'm going to add um, a product called Urea. And this will um, help everything dissolve better. And I'm going to add and this isn't a powder form, so I don't need to wear my respirator or my dust mask. Um, it comes in these little beads. I'm going to add um, one tablespoon. Hear that urea in there dissolving. Okay. 
And the amount of water that you're going to be using um, is a total of all the water that you use. So I'm using a half a gallon of water and that is being used for um, making my dye stock, um, dissolving my salt and everything. If I were using uh, the soda ash uh, during the dyeing process rather than pre-soaking, I would reserve enough water to dissolve that soda ash also. So the next uh, thing I need to do is measure out uh, my salt. And we're going to use We're going to need 162 grams. So, what are my grams here? And we're going to dissolve that in our water. And you do want this thoroughly dissolved before you uh, put your dye stock or your yarn in here. There's a lot of stirring involved in dyeing, um, especially cellulose fiber. All right, so that is thoroughly dissolved. All right, now I'm going to stir up my dye again. And I'm going to add it to my water. And I still have some reserved water here, so I'm going to use that to rinse out my cup. have some dye in here and you might think that well that's not very much dye but if you're trying to reproduce a color especially it's important that you get all the dye the same in each batch so better to get all of it out of the cup and off the spoon So now I can go ahead and add the rest of my water because I don't need to dissolve anything else. And I will just stir that up some more. Now I'm going 
to bring over my yarn. And I've had it soaking in a bucket over here. And just rinse it out, or bring it out. So here is my yarn, and you can see it looks like it's kind of a mess, but um, I have skeined it into two skeins, and I put figure eight ties in four places on each skein so that it won't get all tangled up. And I can easily separate the two skeins, and they're not going to get tangled. So then I have also put a zip tie um, through both skeins and you can do a zip tie on each skein if you like, but these are fairly small skeins so I just did one zip tie on each or on both of them. And you don't want to tie your figure eight ties too tightly because you want your yarn to be able to move around and separate. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, so this is wet, but it's been wrung out very well and so it's not dripping at all. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And we're going to um, stir this every few minutes for um, about an hour and a half. So like I said, there's a lot of stirring involved in dyeing. And you, the reason that you stir it so much is you want the fibers to move around and separate from each other so that the dye can penetrate to all the um, all the layers and you can also and the reason that i like to use the zip tie is you can grab that zip tie and you can pull it up and kind of swirl things around make sure nothing's getting terribly tangled and that looks like a really nice black. So the interesting part about dyeing uh, cellulose fiber versus uh, protein fibers is with cellulose fibers with this particular um, brand of dye, uh, you do it with lukewarm or cool water um, and the dye bath will not exhaust. Um, it will look like this when it's completely done dyeing and there's no more uh, dye that will attach to the fibers. Um, with protein fibers and acid dyes, the water will uh, go from being black like this to completely clear if you've done it right and measured the correct amount of dye because all of the dye molecules will attach to the fiber itself. So I will be doing a video on dyeing protein fibers again in black, um, oddly enough, because uh, for my double weave blanket that I am planning, I did not have enough uh, black wool spun up. And so I had to get more to spin, but I couldn't get black. The only thing I could get was the gray. And so I spun the gray and I plan on dyeing it black. Um, so we will let this uh, go for an hour and a half, stirring occasionally. Um, in that time, and then we will come back and finish the process. Okay, so we are back, and uh, I actually let this soak for about six hours. 
um, because I had some other things that I was doing and I just couldn't get back to it. But it's okay because you can let it soak for however long. And you can see that this is a nice dark black, which is exactly what we want. And it looks kind of tangled up, but that's okay. Um, we're just going to kind of slosh it through here and um, let it kind of straighten itself out. And then um, I'm going to take and just wring out the excess dye. And you can see, like I described before, that the dye bath is very dark still. And this is very different from when you're dyeing with acid dyes and dyeing protein fibers like wool because uh, the dye bath will exhaust and all the dye molecules will be in the yarn and you'll have clear water. It's actually kind of really cool. Um, but that is not the case with um, uh, dyeing cellulose. So I'm going to uh, rinse this with cool water um, to rinse out any excess dye. And we're just going to rinse it until it runs clear. And it will probably take some time. And you can see a lot of the excess dye um, coming out. And this is, uh, this is safe to go down your drain. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you are in a septic tank, you, I don't know about a septic tank. So if you're in a septic system, um, you might want to check the uh, Dharma Trading Company's website and see what they say about um, dumping it down septic systems. I just don't know. But I am on City Sewer and uh, City Sewer is trying to dump it down the drain. So you can see it's um, still staying nice and dark in color. I'm going to set that aside and dump this out. Right. And the nice part about uh, doing cotton is you don't have to worry about it felting or anything like that. So. So we're just going to keep rinsing this until it uh, gets to the point where it's not releasing a lot of dye. It may release a little more um, before we wash it. Unfortunately, um, this is not a water conserving activity. We use a lot of water. Um, some people will collect rainwater and uh, use rainwater, which is a great option. So you can see that the rinse water is getting a lot lighter. I'm not getting this much excess dye off. 
Okay, so I think this will probably be the last rinse before I actually put soap to it. And we will wash it um, with uh, Simpacol soap and hot water. So I put about a tablespoon, um, maybe not even a tablespoon, of Simpacol in the water, and it's hot water, and um, this will help set the dye and uh, make it color fast. At this point, um, I'm wearing the gloves to protect my hands from the hot water. Helps if I get the glove on the right hand. Um, and I mean, this is just hot tap water. It's not anything crazy. Uh, it's not, you know, it's like 120 degree tap water. And you can see some more dye being released, but that's fine. So we're gonna let that set for 10 or 15 minutes, and then we will rinse it again and rinse it until it runs clear. Okay, so we did our final rinse, and you can see that the water is just a little bit tinged um, and that is perfectly normal. And so I will uh, finish rinsing all the soap out of this and then I'll roll it in a towel to absorb some of the excess water and hang it to dry. And then we'll take a look at it and see how well I did. So here we are with the uh, two skeins of yarn that I dyed in black. And they're completely dry now and uh, skeined up. And you can see they have a definite blue look to them. Um, the black, the 300 new black from Dharma Trading Company does say that uh, you it skews towards blue. And I think that it will work for my purposes. Um, but I am a little bit disappointed in it, but I shouldn't be surprised. Um, we did see a lot of red come out in the rinse. And so my thought is that the blue molecules of the dye um, attach themselves faster to the yarn than the red molecules. And so once the yarn is saturated with the blue molecules, the red molecules just sit there and say, hey, I'm just going to swim around and I can't attach to anything. So um, I have two options. I can use it as is, which will probably work just fine. Um, I might sample and see how it looks. Uh, the other option is I could take this yarn and re-dye it with a different um, black that does indicate from Dharma Trading Company that it is a truer, truer black. But we'll see how the sample comes out. Anyways, I hope that you found this 
uh, video helpful and informative. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the notifications button so that you get notified when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving and dyeing.